We wrote an article that went viral and sparked a natural hair revolution. We are Elise and Aisha, moms to small humans, digital content creators, licensed hairstylists, brand agnostic, curl educators, and generally your snarky girlfriends with no filter. We're two women from the south side of Chicago taking the stupid out of natural hair. On this episode, we're going to be discussing how our business right now is not business as usual. Okay, now this is this is a topic because we had a whole phone conversation about this <laughs> recently. This is where it actually came from. It was inspired from that phone conversation. Yep. <laughs> and we were talking about gatekeepers. Like there are no like who's like, like who can gatekeep Instagram? I mean, no, Mark Zuckerberg, because Facebook owns it. Clearly. I mean, because he makes us pay for marketing. But <laughs> nobody has any control over the social media space. Like, you can get on social media, and you can create some bomb-ass content just like the next person, and nobody can keep you from gaining attention or followers or dough. <laughs> I mean, and beyond the social, there is no one to tell you yes or no about starting a business, mm-hmm. uh, starting a website, having kids, mm-hmm. anything. There are no gatekeepers anymore. We are able to literally live our lives and build our lives in whatever way we desire. Yeah, like Al Gore made a whole internet for us. He <laughs> gave, We got to pay to use it, but... but. <laughs> We can, Al Gore and Beyonce's <laughs> internet, you can be whoever you want to be. You can be who you want to be. You can live how you want to live, and you can do what you want to do. And it can bring you, actually, a lot of money. Like, you can make a decent living from just using the space. Um, but getting back to beauty and how things have always operated, like, I came into this industry later <laughs> later. later, right? Um, I came in on the on the precipice <laughs> of the internet. Like I'm here as an internet person, um, mm-hmm. and I've seen how so many people have grown their businesses just through using social media. So I've been in this space a lot longer, mm-hmm. and. Facebook, so I still have an original .edu from Facebook. Wow. I remember the day that Florida a and University, hey Rattlers, <laughs> and FSU got Facebook. Everybody was hype. I had never used my .edu. So they rolled it out. They like, rolled it out to each university, like university by university. So they had like different launches at each university, and it was spread by word of mouth from people who knew people at other schools who had Facebook. I learned about it. Probably from some, probably from like a roommate or somebody who lived in my college housing. It was like, you ever heard of Facebook? Oh, you need to check it out because we had College Club, we had MySpace, we had Black Planet, but those were the precursors oh. on social media. Nobody was really doing business except maybe musicians and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Musicians, artists, and maybe graphic designers early yeah, on. Got it. And so in, oh, what was this, 2006, 2005, 2006, Facebook rolled out. And I graduated, I think, the same year uh, from beauty school. Okay. And so I didn't go straight into being behind the chair. But a couple of years later, when I did go behind the chair, I was like, I need a website. And I need a Facebook page. And I think this was before Facebook pages were popular as marketing things. Uh, but even then, we were able to create a website. I had to take a $200 course that taught me how to build a WordPress website Mm. And I built my website. I've had online booking since online booking was a thing. My style seat number was 1425. <laughs> 1425 on a platform that now has millions of people. Mm-hmm. So to understand about being an early adopter, that's always been me. So it boggles my mind today in 2019 Almost that there are beauty professionals and salons that do not have websites, that do not engage on social media that do not do the things that are actually going to remove the gatekeepers from your business yeah, and because accelerate your growth. You know what's interesting? When I was younger, um, probably about 12, 13, because I was, it was my hairstylist. My hairstylist at the time asked me and my brother to go out and take mailers. Oh, wow. And draw. <laughs> Ooh. Yes. Take our mailers. And they were just like little flyers. 
Mm-hmm. Take them and drop them off to different buildings. And I remember, like, we stuffed them in mailboxes, which is totally illegal. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, do, don't put stuff on people's cars either. People in Fayetteville who are braiding hair. I got one of those yesterday. <laughs> but we went out, like, guerrilla style, street style, mm. and dropped these mailers off. So I'm thinking about, like, what it took for her to make a flyer. Yeah, which she should probably pay somebody else to do because that's actually what my mom my mom owned a desktop publishing business. The precursor to what we see as graphic designers today, she was using Quark on the big gigantic Macintoshes that were like this big in my house to do stuff like that for people and then get them printed at Kinkos, which was not cheap back then. <laughs> so just imagine like having to pay a twelve and thirteen year old some lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they do the job right. More than likely they're not because they're not going to follow instructions, right? Um, Go out and send these mailers out and cover. We went from 79th to 83rd from Ashland up to about maybe Woods. Dropping these mailers off. That's a a good square mile. Yeah. yeah. She had a a nice stack. All right. So here we are. 2019, and all you got to do is put up an Instagram, right? Because that's where the clients are, y'all. I don't care what nobody tell y'all. They are on Instagram. When I ask people how they found me, they're like, oh, Instagram. Or their cousin, who is on Instagram, told them, okay? (laughs) It's like, here's the website. Go look at it. (laughs) Right. So here we are in 2019. We have all of this social media, right? Um, And we have access to it. The only thing, and it's free. It is completely free. You can do whatever you want without having to actually pay a dime. We started the 30-day hair detox with zero dollars. Zero coins. I was going through a divorce. I was in beauty school I, and a single mom. <laughs> and I child care, the whole nine yard, no car. Okay? like So the, when we say we started out like at the ground floor, it started out at the ground floor, but knowing the power of... What has taken the gatekeepers out of the game? We don't have to ask someone for permission to go on to a TV show. No. We can be in a space of our own and with a camera guy who is awesome. <laughs> Amazing. And, <laughs> and um, a few little tech tools be in anybody's living room that decides to click on us. Or anybody's car if they're on the way somewhere, like maybe dropping off their kids. Like we can be wherever we want to be. There is nobody stopping us from being a part of the conversation, whatever conversation we feel like having at that given moment. So with that's that being said- the only gatekeeper now? Because mm-hmm. this actually addresses some things I've been seeing today around the social spaces. The only gatekeepers happen to be- us. <laughs> the individual That's hilarious. That's hilarious. who is using the excuses of perfectionism, who's using the excuses of I'm not ready or I'm uncomfortable or I don't know mm. or whatever the excuse is to not just do it. Like Nike goes on to something. Where they were like, <laughs> Man, just do so it. so far ahead of their time with the just do it. Like it's a timeless statement. Like <laughs> That will go on beyond our our lives and our children's lives. But you don't have anybody stopping you from doing anything. So when we started with the 30-day hair detox, there was nobody to stop us and say, hey, you can't say that or you can't do it that way or why would you say a thing like that? We are just out here. We're doing us. (laughs) We we started out with with my website, Mm -hmm. her website. The email list I was paying money for at the time. Yeah, right. It was like fifty dollars like, a month. It was like fifty dollars a month. Yeah. Mad Mimi was like, yeah. Mad Mimi was doing what it needed to do. Mm-hmm. We put up a landing page and said, Hey, we're gonna do this if you give us your email. And it was just that simple. Just that simple. Like literally. Um, the way that we started, like, we didn't do any videos. Like, what video? Like <laughs> public post- no, no, we did though. When not, we did, not. We did live videos, yes. but we did not record and edit anything. We didn't have time to record <laughs> anything. We we had thriving behind the. Well, you were still in school. I was still in school. I had a thriving behind the chair uh, practice. What I like to call my what I do practice um, <laughs> in three Hilarious. different cities, and so we didn't have time to sit and film and edit and obsess and pick perfect music and pick perfect lighting and say this isn't good enough to to be put out. It was like, here's this iPhone 6. <laughs> here's this empty room in my apartment because I don't have any money to actually put furniture in this one room. <laughs> this apartment had po- 
called Metal Bugs and Black Mold. Oh, and wow. I was pregnant and had morning sickness oh, in the midst of all of this. But what it took was a $30 tripod on Amazon, some natural light coming in from my kitchen door because I didn't have money to buy lights at that time. <laughs> right. And turning the phone on and opening my mouth with actually I didn't even really have makeup at the time. Because I didn't wear makeup at all. So I like you, I put some you had a little you had a little had lipstick. A lipstick you had a little lipstick. lipstick. No, but it, it, it looked good though. Because I would have said something. It was like, oh well, you need to go refill no, that with some lipstick. On. I was like, okay, she look okay today. <laughs> I mean not to mention the videos that I did from the basement because I couldn't do them in my shower because my shower had doors. So it made it impossible to record. So I filmed it in the basement over with the, the ba- wash basin. You know the, like the, the utility wash basin sink? And the reception was horrible. The lighting was bad. The lighting was bad. And the video quality was even it worse. Was so, like, when we say we we started from ground zero, and again, nobody stopped us. Now, I'll give it to the audience, um, to those who have been following us, who Just support the us. Beginning. Like, they Thank was like, you. I don't care, but I want to see you wash your hair. I don't care if it's, I can't really see. <laughs> because what they, what they found out is it's not about. It being perfect, looking yes. great, being yes. this thing, you grow into that. You grow it's into that. It's taken us four years to grow into recorded video. Like, that I had to fight her about, mind you. Like, I had to fight this lady about. She had to fight me about it. I had to fight her. I was like, listen, no, we didn't fight. Well, we didn't fight, but we've been planning to <laughs> take pictures. We have not. This is the first year we took like pictures together. Together with, like, make, with, with a professional. And with a professional. <laughs> We've taken pictures, but nobody professional is like, yeah, turn this way. Like we, I had to. You're good. Stand like this. Yes, I literally like. Okay, I was like, seriously though, like this is year four. We really need to take these pictures this year. And then it's like, then this whole like podcast thing came up. I was like, okay, so we're hiring somebody to do. It's like, no, no, we can do it. And I was like, but we can't. we can't. (laughs) We cannot do it. Um, so the best thing that we did this year, and it took us a long time to even get to this point, is mm-hmm. being able to bring on support um, and allowing us to have the energy <laughs> and the space so we can do the other things that, again, that the gatekeepers that y'all think, because y'all are the real gatekeepers. Y'all, 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 y'all thoughts own. are the gatekeepers. Yes. There's nobody telling you that this has to be perfect. There's no one telling you that, again, we had people who were joining us in our crappy house, <laughs> crappy. I mean, crappy. I, I was because in a, I was in the apartment where my family's building was getting foreclosed. Okay, we had bed bugs. I mean, this is it was dire. She had bed bugs. I had palmetto. <laughs> I had palmetto bugs. So let's talk about let's talk about this. Like who's time. worse, right? Like, <laughs> like I don't know like, if I can I don't, beat, I don't think I can beat your mold. Though. And I can't. I can't do the. I can't do the bed bugs. I, palmetto but bugs. I'm you just can telling kill you, like I these can't. were real things happening. I didn't have a car. I was doing periscopes from a bus. Not one of those things kept me from doing lives showing. She was literally on the bus, like, just pulled up in front of the school, <laughs> CCA, 79th and Sony Island. Probably talking to another person, like, okay. Hey, hey girl, hey. hey. You talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like I was saying, so like none of that stopped me. So people who see or who have been following are like, man, I remember that. Like, that was a real thing. Like, when I got a car, they was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're... Like, I have people messaging can, can me. We, can we say where we are right now? Yeah, we're at my apartment. This is her apartment. <laughs> like, can we talk about this? Brick wall situation, right? Like, us. and it wasn't that I couldn't afford her apartment like a year ago. I was just not ready to move. Was <laughs> I was wasn't ready girl. to move. My son was still in preschool, so like, I stayed at my mom's. It's like, okay, like he's got to go to real school now. <laughs> he's going to <laughs> kindergarten. She, I was like, we need to actually have a physical space of our mm-hmm. own. And, and she so, was able to move into the neighborhood of his school. Yes, not just wherever. But so this is what we're saying. All that to say. You, there's no gatekeepers. Zero. And stop being your own gatekeeper. Nobody. Start with what you have. If it's your living room, if it's the, if it's the one clean corner of your living room, I, I'm gonna tell you. And whatever cell phone that you have, even if it's a track phone that you gotta pay minutes for, it has a camera. It will take some video. It will take some audio. You have a computer, or you have some notes on your phone. Start writing that Start course. Start there, because no matter what you have or what you're actually using, your actual resources. Guess what people are here for? They are here for this content. So we're not waiting for brands to come like knock down our door. We're mm-hmm. like, no, no, we are our brand. <laughs> we know what we're doing. And we'll and partner with we you. We definitely will partner with you. But we're not going to be 
sponsored. And yeah, because then that actually keeps us from having this thing right here called our voice. <laughs> we own that. Um, and we own what we do all the time. We're not waiting for salon owners to give us a chance <laughs> or what we need in our careers. Yeah. Um, we're not waiting for... We don't need a stage. Like, this is, I mean, hey, it's, let's be honest. This is a perfect stage. If y'all don't realize, I'm cute up here. <laughs> I have on sweatpants and running shoes underneath here. And I, I got don't on have a, to be cute on stage with some heels. Right. I got on a dress, no tights, and some socks with my with my aquaphor on my feet. <laughs> because it's that time of year with some shea butter. Because that's where we put yeah, the shea butter on. Yeah, shea butter. On my, oh, yeah. Shea that my feet going to be nice. Baby. My fake, My feet going to be nice, though. <laughs> but we're saying all that to say, again, the rules have changed. Um, doing business properly has not changed, but how you go about it has. So we have, again, we have all of these. Imagine if my stylist in the 90s who I was delivering these mailers for had this type of access because she did bomb ass hair. Yes. She did my all she the receipts are in those pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, the pictures are the receipts. And what people are looking for, I mean, let's face it, consumers, we love y'all, but y'all are shiny. Y'all minor birds. Y'all go for anything that's shiny. <laughs> so if you don't know what a minor b- bird is, a minor bird collects shiny objects and takes mm-hmm. them back to their nest. I got attacked by a minor bird twice in my life. Oh my gosh. Like a real, like, I- like by the lakefront. Oh my okay. god! <laughs> so at the time, my hair was dark black. Ah, I had it was black shiny. hair. It was very shiny. And I was running. Ah, so black, wet this, hair. This the bird chased me. So minor birds. You are looking at for shiny things that you put into your nest. That's mm-hmm. what people are attracted by. That is, it's marketing, right? Marketing one on one. It's marketing one on one. So they're attracted to that. No, and no shade. I love consumers because I'm one too. I'm attracted to shiny things as well. Oh, shiny shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna tell oh, you, I got a sure. whole pair of J. Crew glitter, <laughs> ombre, pink, and something pumps over there that I was like, I'm just waiting on these two hundred fifty dollars shoes to go on sale. I need them. Not saying that I don't have two other pairs of glitter shoes from J. Crew. <laughs> so shiny objects are a thing. Shiny objects are a thing. So we want to be able to attract them with the best pictures. Maybe you're in a crappy ass salon and you got one good wall outside. Go outside. Take those pictures under their sun. I'm telling you, it's going to make a huge difference in what they're actually seeing, what they think they're going to experience and what, when they come in the salon. What their perception of you is. If oh, you're yeah. so afraid to share thinking that someone is not going to like you or that you're going to open yourself up for whatever, or you feel like there's an imaginary gatekeeper keeping you from doing this, you're keeping yourself from a thriving business. You're keeping yourself from building other revenue streams the way you may want to. You're keeping yourself in this box because that box used to be real. When my mother, I grew up at the daughter of an entrepreneur. That box was real. Ooh. That box was gatekeepers at the newspaper. That box was gatekeepers at the TV stations. That gatekeeper was, you had to go downtown and pay $30 for parking and then pay $50 to $100 to go to this one networking event. Those were the gatekeepers. All The chains have come off. So you've got to take the chains off of your mind and not be afraid to share create the content because right now we're talking to we're not just talking to everybody because everybody can create whatever and it can be cute shiny pretty on the surface right and be crap underneath but what happens is the people who have that they're usually the ones that are not afraid to share they're gonna make it look good oh yeah so that they can sell something and it just kind of be whatever but it's the people who have major talent Mm-hmm. that often tend to doubt themselves so much to become their own gatekeepers. And yeah, so you're holding, you are holding yourself back. There is the, the gatekeeper lives in your mind. It is not a real person. There is nobody stopping you from doing anything that you set your mind to do. So at that point, get out of your head, get the work done, and put it out there. Let's, ex- let's, let's- execute. Execute, yes. Let, like, let's, let's get execute. To, let's get down to this execution because we'll say this and we'll close. <laughs> <laughs> but we I, we talk about this a lot because we see it a lot on Instagram about how people are scared to do stuff and we like we don't even know what that feels like. Like when everything that we did, we've done because we needed to do it. We needed money, <laughs> like, and so we figured out ways for um, or to create other revenue streams for ourselves in the process of like, what do we want to offer? How do we offer it? And what are people asking us for? We Absolutely. really always took into account is yeah, we were because again. 
We both started out in places where we was. <laughs> I was a successful stylist, but I was also going to California every six weeks, dropping fifteen hundred dollars just on a trip every six weeks. So when you think about the circumstances in your life and you are putting limits on your own income, it's like what what skill do I have? What value do I have that other people want? And what are people asking me for? You got to get back to, because everybody wants to create stuff, but what are people actually asking you for? And no gatekeeper can come between what the people are asking for. Deliver that. Deliver that and keep asking questions. Deliver that and figure out how you can improve upon it. You, it can, nothing is ever going to be perfect. Never. If you don't put it out, you won't even know how to tweak it for the people who want your product. So... Just do it. Yeah, let's that's it. it. Let's execute now. <laughs>